Hello there. This is the Business Day Energy Exclusive. My name is Elizabeth Musa. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, on April 3, 2024, raised electricity tariff for customers enjoying 20 hours power supply daily. And customers in this category are said to be under the Band A classification. The increase will see the customers paying 225 kilowatt per hour from the current 66 Naira, a development that has been heavily criticized by many Nigerians considering the immediacy of the tariff hike and the current hardship in the country. Now to discuss this and so much more, we have joining us Mr. Ifain Ukwama. He is an energy consultant and is also the CEO of Powerful Technology Limited. He joins us to discuss all of this and so much more. Welcome to Business Day, Mr. Ifain. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, thank you to be part of this. Very well. So very quickly, let's get into it. So you are a seasoned expert in the electricity and energy sector. Can you yep. please educate our audience on the importance of this newly introduced tariff and why it might have been introduced? Welcome, viewers. Um, I think we're going to have a very deep conversation in terms of we understanding um, the electricity thing. I think one of the key things of my myself and my business is we want to educate Nigerians on making electricity electricity a, a kind of a, a social context so that you understand what it really means um, to you. So to your question about what does this increase mean? So in case you don't know, Elizabeth said it a few moments ago, there was a 300% increase in the price electricity tariff for band A customers. Now there was an increase from 68 Naira per kilowatt hour all the way to 225 Naira for urban customers. Now, these customers are being assumed to be under the band A, so they have a minimum of 20 hours of daily supply. Now, to your question about what does it mean, right? The National, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission did mention a couple of reasons for this. Number one, the cost reflective tariff. And to be fair to them, right? The Nigerian electricity system has not been cost reflective. What that means is this. When you receive electricity from the distribution company into your home, a part of that electricity is being subsidized by the government. Actually, it was around $2.3 billion um, dollars earmarked in 2024 budget for that. Now, because the government has removed the price, I mean, the subsidy on petroleum resources, and they are hoping to remove the $2.3 billion, um, dollars, around 10% of the national budget that is being used to subsidize electricity, they then come up with this term that has been bandering around, cost-reflective tariff. Now, cost-reflective tariff means that the cost of generating electricity and the cost of distributing electricity is reflective of the price the end cost of the and pays for it. And with this increase, to be fair, right, the price of electricity in Nigeria has been really pretty much low. One, because the government is subsidizing it. Two, because of the issues around the system of um, um, neck placing a band, a, a limit to how much um, people can actually, uh, the distribution company can actually charge to customers to around 68 naira. So to answer your question, I would say the reflective tariff has to come in place. The federal government has to liberalize it. We might talk about the emotional hula baloo around why it's how it affects us, how it affects me, how is there no jobs and you're increasing electricity tariff and the rest of them. But in terms of the reason why they did what they did, they needed to enhance a cost reflective tariff regime where the price of generating, transmitting and distributing electricity is being pegged to what a customer pays. And they needed to remove the electricity subsidy that is being paid by the federal government earmarked in this 2024 budget on electricity. Okay, fantastic. No, So now, Nigeria is yet to scale beyond 4,000 megawatts. And in the last 10 years, despite the privatization program and, mm. it's, and trillions of Naira that has been spent, what's mm. your view on how to scale power distribution? In terms of the privatization, right? I've always said it before now, right? 10 years ago, I said, what is going to happen is that no, no one is going to add one watt to the national grid. And we're going to, as we have seen so far now, they've going to increase the price per kilowatt hour by as much as seven, eight times within the last 10 years. But the sector will still remain what it is. I did write an article 
on a case against decentralization, but that's for a separate um, conversation now. The increase in terms of the prices, we need to understand the context of why this thing happened. So I'll give you the context. 75, 7 to 75% of the electricity generated in Nigeria is generated using gas, right? 75% of the electricity generated is generated using gas. That's number one. Number two, when these generating companies buy gas, they buy it in dollars. They buy gas in dollars. Gas is a globally priced item and it is being priced in dollars. Number three, when you buy electricity in your house, you pay in Naira, right? You pay 68 Naira per kilowatt hour. So what do you think is gonna happen when you're generating the key source of 75% of the entire country generating capacity is gas that is priced in dollars. At the same time, the people that are recovering the money back to the system, like soaking up the liquidity back into the system, is collecting it in Naira. Any foreign exchange differential between dollar and Naira would affect the electricity prices. That's mm -hmm. number one. Secondly, the Nigerian Midstream Downstream Petroleum Authority recently announced a price increase in the in the price of natural gas from as much as $2.18 to $2.42. Now, energy consultants like us, when we see this, the first thing that comes to our mind is there's going to be an increase. There's no way around it. There has to be an increase because the key input to your generating capacity is gas, 75% of your generator in, in Nigeria is gas. Gas prices has increased. There has to be um, an increase in the price of dollar. So for me, I think the key problem is how we generate electricity in the first place. So what I tell my, my, my customers is this, and people who get to listen. If you tell me you want to reduce the cost of generating power across any system, you have to look at it within three frameworks. Number one, what is the price of generating that electricity in the first place? You need to understand what that price is. Number two, what is the, in terms of the load consumption, what appliances are you using in your home that would make you pay less over time based on the energy efficiency of the appliances? And number three, when we have visibility of how much power we're using and how much we're paying for it, it drives behavior changes people are now able to understand the relationship between how much they pay and how much they use but on that first point the gas issue the price of generating electricity from the national grid from gas is really 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 expensive with the prices of gas going up with the russian ukraine war and the foreign exchange differentials between the naira and the dollar there is nothing anyone anyone seeing this there's nothing um, neck can do there is nothing the discos can do. The price, the key input of gas has gone up. The key input price of gas has gone up. So that means that you know the prices on, on the on the on the downstream sector needs to increase. Generators is really very the, the most um, most expensive. It costs around four hundred naira per kilowatt hour to generate using generators like your normal diesel and normal um, generators at home. Then we then talk about now they've increased it to two hundred and twenty five naira for a band A. And make no mistake about it, this is just the beginning. Whether you are in band Z or you are in band E, that uses a minimum of four hours daily supply, this is just the beginning. They just started with band A. The next band they're going to go into is band B, which band is the B. minimum of 16 hours daily supply. Well, that's a different conversation in that sense. So the cost reflective tariff of gas is high. We need to go into more alternative sources of power. There's the solar, there's the windmill, there's a coal in Enugu. We need to start thinking in that sense to reduce the price of generating electricity in the first place. Right. So now you've already brought me to my next question. You mentioned solar power. So are there innovative ways that businesses can solve these power challenges? Yes. I'll speak from my own personal experience. Like mm -hmm. said earlier on, I'm the founder and CEO of a company known as Powerful Technology Limited, otherwise known as Powerful. We are a solar financing company that solves the problem of energy access, energy reliability, and availability mm -hmm. using these innovative ways. What I'm trying to do with a company is that we are building the operating system that powers the energy transition in Africa towards solar adoption 
with the use of embedded finance. I will explain what I mean by embedded finance in a bit of it. But what right. do I mean by the operating system and what do I mean by powering the energy transition in Africa? If you ask anyone, go to the streets, go to anyone who has solar panels in their home. It was actually my son who was singing one of these days. You know, I'm not sure if you did that in primary school, the song that says the day is bright, it's brighter and fair. Oh, happy, oh, happy day. <laughs> yeah. So he was singing it and I was just walking and it just dawned on me that this is it. This is it. The day that is bright is a day of joy. It's mm -hmm. a happy day. Ask anyone who has solar panels in his home. Whenever he sees the sun, that sun that we are always going about crying, that is frying all our ideas, we are sweating, who off, who... Who was the last person that entered that hellfire that did not close the door and the rest of them? Anyone who uses solar panel and sees the sun in the morning, he knows that that day is a day of joy because he knows that he's going to generate enough electricity, he's going to store enough in his battery and he's going to use without the reliance on the grid. That's number one. Two, the price of generating with the solar panel is the lowest ever. 10 cents per kilowatt hour, around 155 naira, 175 naira per kilowatt hour. Cost reflective price now, not the 68, 66 naira they were telling you before now that band A was taking or every other person. Cost reflective tariff of putting the solar is around 155, 170 naira, roughly give or take. Now I know what you're thinking. Solar panels are expensive. We are going to go to the bank. How much is it? Blah, blah, blah. The reputation of the suppliers. Can solar panel take a, can it power my air condition, my freezer, every, and all the sort of talk. Solar panel can power this world if we, if we do it, right? It is just a question of capacity. Capacity number one. The same way you get a better pass my neighbor generator that has a 0 0.9 kVA capacity, that the moment you put on your air condition or your freezer, it goes off. It's the same reason of a solar panel increase the capacity to be able to manage these multiple sources and you you have it that's it on them now number three innovative ways of doing embedded finance so with my company what we tend to do is this and let me explain to you how we do it with a story because you know i have a six-year-old boy he asks me what is this powerful what is what when you say powerful as a company what do you do and I used this story to explain it to him and he got it. You know what they say, the best way to explain your business is to explain it to a six-year-old boy. If he understands mm. it, he's putting it right. So this is what right. this story. Imagine you, Elizabeth, you have lots of money. Um, I know you have, but just imagine there's like, you know, money in the bank, you know. Right. And you then decided you wanted to build a very big house. You mm -hmm. bought land in Lagos and built a 50 room house in lagos now because you can only stay in one of that room you decided you wanted to go to the streets and get 50 different people to come and live in that house right you got 50 different people and put them in the house now because the power supply to the entire house is coming from the national grid mm -hmm. or it is coming from your diesel generator in that place let's say you put a 200 kva diesel generator that is powering the entire house you have then created another problem. Now, the problem is this. If I live in one of that room and I have one AC, one air condition, I mean, one air condition, one fridge and one TV, I expect to pay 10 times less than someone who lives in another room in the house that uses 10 AC, 10 TV, and 10 ref ref freezer because it is assumed he's using 10 times more. Of course, in the spirit of African brotherliness, we fight among ourselves. How much should you pay? Who should you pay? How much you use? How mm -hmm. much kind of thing? Right. We then come to you to then say, Elizabeth, you need to find a story, a solution for us. You then come to my company and then explain the problem to us. And we build what we call a digital infrastructure. You know, you talked about innovative ways, a digital infrastructure. Now, that's just a fancy way of explaining a very simple thing, which is number one. We install smart meters to each of those rooms that measures the power supply coming into those rooms. Because, you know, when people talk about estimated billing, estimate, it's the biggest problem. It's like, how can you sell rice without cop, right? How do you know to how much are you selling? That's a fundamental problem, metering. Or how can you go to a, a fuel pump and, 
buy fuel without a fuel gauge? How do we know what we are paying for and how much we're getting? So that's the first thing. We meter the entire, we meter each of those rooms that measures the power consumptions coming into those rooms. We've then been able to integrate a payment solution that collects payments directly from the customer, and then we remit that money back to you. So the value proposition is basically for anyone who builds and manages any sort of multi-housing or multi-office spaces and are frustrated with the difficult process of costing electricity consumption for each consumer unit, Powerful provides that digital infrastructure that matches power consumptions to payment, collects the payment directly from the customer, and then remits it over to the landlord. Our customers include real estate developers, landlords that you know have multi-housing and those sort of things. Now, what we then noticed when we started the business, we then noticed that these real estate developers are then coming to us and then telling us that the price of using this generator in the first place is expensive. Now, remember, three things are working for us. Number one, we know the price that they are generating that electricity. We know how much they are collecting, these real estate guys, and we know what is the kilowatt hour consumption. And more importantly, we have a way to take payments from that customer. What we have then done is to be able to then switch the energy source from a diesel generator to solar. Because we know how much solar we need to put, we know how much battery we need to put. We've been collecting that data for roughly three to four months. Mm -hmm. And we can then reduce that price of per kilowatt from 40 cents per kilowatt, which is around 400 naira, taking 1,000 naira as the exchange rates, give or take, to around 10 cents per kilowatt hour, which is anything, like I said, from 155 to 170. So in answer to that question, innovative ways, we do solar financing, but we do solar financing on the basis that we know how much you are using and how much you are paying for, for your existing current diesel generator. Now, this idea right. came to me because of my mom. Then I was in the UK working as an operation manager at Amazon, uh, managing operations and the rest of them. And then she runs a cold storage business in Owerri, in Imo State. Diesel took around 40% you know, cold storage. That's cold, that cold room needs to be always cold on point. So she was running diesel generators every single time. 40% of all our own money was going to diesel, not to products, not to anything, just to maintain the diesel. And I told her this cannot work. And I remember speaking to a lot of financing partners. You know, we spoke to banks, we spoke to them. The interest rate was too high. The payback period was too short. And uh, when you ask them, why is this? They say she's risky. Why is she risky? We don't know how much electricity she's using. We don't know how much she's using. We don't know how much, how much diesel, sorry, she's buying every day. What do you mean you don't know how much diesel she's buying? I know she's my mom, right? Ah, then he said one thing, men will lie, women will lie, data will don't. Show me that this is how much diesel she's buying every day. You remember I was corporate in the UK living my life normally. It then dawned on me. We need to show him how she's spending diesel, gen diesel or petrol, and then he would then give me financing to reduce the price of kilowatts of hour. Of course, then I then decided to solve the problem myself. We started out in a little bit and then we said that we then the metering tells us that story. Then we then take the payments collection to collect the money. And that's how we go into the business. So in terms of your innovative solutions, right? Powerful provides, if you, if you want to buy solar batteries, inverters, and you need a reputable company, because that's very, very important. I've seen solar panel born in my eye, right? From Alaba, right? So yeah. you can buy now, then, you know, that after support and that service orientation is not there. If you need reputable, you come to us. If you then need any sort of financing, more like maybe an hotel, a school, a, an hospital, an office space, shops, real estate, invest, any of those people, you need financing, we would go through this model. We provide financing. But first, we need to know how much power you're using, how much you're paying for it, and then be able to then provide financing that is custom fit for what you do. Of course, basically what I'm saying is that the smart metering needs to be connected to your diesel generator to know how much you're doing. And then we provide our own balance sheet to do the financing. So basically, with everything you've said, you've talked about some of the things that your company, Powerful Technology, does. 
And you've found a way to link it to how businesses can innovate by using some of the services that your company provides, basically. Yeah. Right. And that's about it on that. So very quickly, if you're looking at a crystal ball right now, what will be your projection? What will be your outlook for Nigeria's power sector in the next five years? There's a lot of fundamental problems that need to change. To be honest, I don't have hope. To be honest, I'll give you the official answer. I don't have hope for it. Mm -hmm. The reason is because a lot of fundamental problems exist that if we want to if we want to start solving them, Nigerians would pay the most for it. So what I mean by that is this privatization that happened over 10 years ago. We privatized at 4,000 megawatts. We are still at 4,000 megawatts, and yet they keep increasing prices, right? One of the things I said at that point was, we shouldn't privatize it. No government in the world has actually increased the electricity system of their country by privatization. Privatization is a post-industrial idea. You, you, you build value, and then you privatize. What has happened then, and this is it, right? The data shows it, 80% of the discos now bankrupt. They're bankrupt, they are being taken over by the banks because they cannot repatriate it. So when you want to privatize, you look at technical competence. Do you have the technical competence to run it? Do you have the managerial competence? And can you put foreign direct investment to it? Because the whole idea of privatization is that we put money into the discos, we increase and show up the value and then we can then privatize it so that the private sector can operate it. That was not what happened. That was not what happened. There was no competence. There was no technical competence. We just sold it to ourselves. And this is what the issue is. To solve that problem now, because of the sanctity of contract, how do you go away from those contracts? The banks are the ones now running these discos because most of these discos cannot be able to keep that thing. That's number one. Number two, I'm not sure most Nigerians know this, that Whenever power is being generated in every any part of the country, that is not an IPP. So ABA is a case, is a different case now, ABA power and then what happened in ABA. You need to send it to the national grid. All the power that you created goes to a place called the National Control Center in Oshobo. And from there, that Oshobo will then send it over to every part of the country. What that means is this, if you're in Zamfara, and you have a generating plant and you send power to Zamfara. It goes from Zamfara through the national grid transmission company, goes to the national control center, and then they can then decide whether they need to send it to Zamfara. What kind of inefficiency is that? And this is the sector we are in. There's a case for a decentralized and a distributed energy systems. If we keep operating in this thing, I don't see where we'll go from them. Of course, the third aspect is gas. 75% of the gas is in generation is in Nigeria, so not too much of hope. I think what we need to do in terms of how to go forward is we need to outsource, bring competent people within the within the distribution space and the generating yeah. space, and then managerial competence, technical competence, and put foreign direct investment. Right? Government has no business with business, right? Because I don't even understand this. 2.3 billion that they are paying for subsidy. What are we? It's like this is this. It has been privatized. It is a private affair, right? What are you still subsidizing it for? What are you still subsidizing it for? They need to come to tell us that okay, um, because they told us then when they were privatizing it that government has no business with with the power. It is now in the hands of the private sector. Then all of a sudden, from then till now. Each of those distribution companies have come every single time to say the government needs to support us. The government needs to support us. We need to do cost reflect. What, what are you talking about? You're a private business entity, and then you need to relate to that and then put that in um, efficiency on that. Of course, I understand the price per kilowatt hour ceiling by neck, but governments involving in subsidy, in my own opinion, doesn't. So in a sense, I don't. I, I think the solution should be bring competent people to run it consult with the National Electricity Regulatory Commission in terms of those stocks reflective tariff. Mm -hmm. The government should take its hands off in terms of subsidy injection. And what we can then do on a national level 
is to improve the national grid, the transmission company, total chaos, right? Collapsed eight times in the last how many months, um, how many years, like collapsed to zero, right? We need to start thinking of bringing that technical competence across all the value chain. On a private personal level, and if you're listening to this, I'll tell you, there's silver at the end of the line. There's a lot of hope there, but think more for yourself, right? Go and source your own power, right? All power belongs to God. He has given us the sun, and yet we look for power elsewhere. We need to leverage that sun on our own basis, generate the electricity we use, and then put solar panels on our roof. This is the one advice I'll give to you. If financing is an issue and you run a distance, there are financing companies that offer competitive rates. I think I'll leave it at that. You've actually said quite a lot. Something you mentioned, you talked about if financing is a lot, there are financing companies that can sort this out for you. But I'm thinking about somebody, you know the poverty ratio in Nigeria. So I'm thinking about somebody like this on the streets, the people at the grassroots, and I'm wondering, can they really have access to solar power? You mentioned all power belongs to God, but how much access do they have to this? Let me start out with some statistics from the World Bank. The World Bank said something in its 2021 reports about Nigeria. It said Nigeria has plus or minus 208 million people. 85 million of these people do not have access to grid electricity. 75% of those who have access to grid electricity do not use up to 12 hours of daily supply for any 24 hour period. Now, this um, all reliable grid power has cost the entire country $29 billion in terms of economic loss. In terms of the total capacity Nigeria needs, it needs at least 180,000 megawatts of power to function optimally. We're still talking around 4,000, right? So energy access, energy reliability, energy availability, and energy cost are the key four things that is we, we are actually going after as a country. So the man on the streets, right, that is not able to afford solar panels and the rest of them, he needs to wait, basically, and this is just the honest truth, because the cost reflective tariff should basically hold, right? It needs to, it needs to imagine you're earning 30,000 minimum wage, you know, and then you want a solar panel that is upwards of maybe 1 million going to 5 million. It's not going to work, right? Mm -hmm. No bank will give it to you, right? So there are organizations like the Renewable Energy Associations. There are people doing mini grid operations, going to the underserved aspects of the market and providing energy access with the World Bank and the IFC, International Finance Corporations. They are looking, and, and I think it's their responsibility to tackle that aspect of the market that is not commercially viable for businesses anyway. Mm -hmm. right? So, and, and they are doing a lot, to be fair, right? Um, I visited a mini grid operation in, in, in Niger State, in, in, in Abuja, where, where we have um, um, some of these mini grid operators as our customers because we're helping them collect payments and the rest of them. It's it. So, the, the poor guy needs to, or the guy on the street with the minimum wage without you know, that kind of thing, he needs to basically liars on a local government basis, see what uh, can the local government on their own pull funds or liars with customers like or with businesses like us and provide a guarantee for us to go into this place and then increase energy access and reliability. These are the conversations for it. Okay, so how do we keep them informed? Um, I mean, there's access to light, then I'm thinking of someone who doesn't even have access to the education on these things, right? Mm -hmm. What are we doing about educating people? How are we making sure that they have knowledge on these things? On the educational aspect of it, which is very, 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 very important, right? People do not have that consciousness of electricity number. Like if you ask someone now, if you see 400,000 Naira, let's say one of the discos give you a bill for electricity bill, how is it calculated? How did it come about this number, right? And it's just a very simple thing, right? What is the price per kilowatt hour, which now has been increased to 225 Naira, which I'm saying that if you do solar, you can get it to 175 Naira. If you're using generator, it's 400 Naira, roughly, give or take. The price per kilowatt hour, you multiply that number 
by the kilowatt hour pool you are having from your power source. So I'll give you an example. I installed solar panels in my parents' place. When we did the initial estimations and the rest of them, we assumed that max, give or take, the, the freezer and the fridge in the parent, my parents' house will not maximum go above 400 um, watts. That was the estimations we made. We did that. We went there. We realized it's around 1,150 mm -hmm. per book. What is this, right? Then, of course, our solar that we made could not work. So immediately, I sent my staff with my mom. They went to the market and bought what they call an inverter freezer from Hisense, inverter freezer from Hisense, which was able to give you 150 watts for a freezer, 150 mm -hmm. watts for a freezer. Now, I'm a value investor, and this is what we tell ourselves. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. For the same value of refrigeration, for things in our freezer to be cold and not spoil, you're paying two different price. You're paying 10 times more. Now, to put this thing in context, because when you explain it to Nigeria, 60% of the cost of electricity is on this. on Basically, on an uninformed populace that does not even know how electricity is being calculated. So you see someone, I say, I bought 10,000 Naira units for my disco. It did not last me one week. My neighbor bought 10,000 Naira, the same 10,000 Naira. It lasted him one month. Why? Kilowatt hour pool. If within a month, that freezer, maybe it cost me, let's say in, in one year, it cost me 100,000 Naira to run that freezer in terms of pricing, right? Mm -hmm. For the other freezer that is 10 times more, it will cost me a million Naira, 10 times more. We need to understand how this disparity exists. Because in our estimation, it's around 60% of the cost of electricity is on inefficient appliances. And to surprise you the most, right? The poor people in Nigeria are the ones that pay the most for electricity. Because they go to the oh, market, wow. they see a freezer that is the cheapest. They see a freezer that is the cheapest. They give them, they don't even check what is the wattage, what is the what is the power pool for this freezer, right? They don't check. The rich guys will go there and say, is the energy efficient? Is the AC energy efficient? Is the ion energy efficient? They look at energy efficiency as a key factor in deciding the choice of it. But the guys, poor guys, do not really care about these things. And then they bring these energy appliances to the home, and then it's draining any units that they are having, every unit. So that's it. The price per kilowatt hour, you multiply it by the kilowatt hour pool. If you do 10 times more than your neighbor, believe me, you will pay 10 times more than your neighbor. And it's just all boiled in fact to the fact that your AC is 10 times more inefficient, your uh, light bulbs are 10 times more inefficient, your freezers are 10 times more, your TV is 10 times more inefficient, and that's why you're paying 10 times more. And the last is how long that you use that. So that's why they say if you're going out of a room, switch it off. If you're not at home, switch it off. I think the Minister of Power is making reference to Nigerians not really appreciating. And to be fair, that's it, right? We think it's more of a social good. So back to the conversation in terms of what can we do in terms of the education. Um, ourselves as a business, we are doing it to educate our customers, right? We're mm -hmm. providing that visibility in terms of how much power you're using, how much you're paying, so that you begin to understand at the troughs and the lows to know, okay, how can we really manage it? With our solution, you can drop power cost by as much as 40% per kilowatt hour because we are reducing the price at which you are generating it in the first place. We are then advising you to then change more of your electrical appliances to more energy efficient ones. And we can then provide that visibility to know how much are you paying for the power you're consuming because when people know what is happening at every single time, they can then change their behavior. So that education, we're doing it on our, on our, on our own. Um, on a broader scale of it, I think more conversations need to be held by the discos. The discos themselves need to go out to explain to people how electricity is being calculated. How is it being calculated? How can you reduce your energy costs? Point to people, let them know these simple, basic things. And then overall, the industry grows. Thank you very much, Mr. Ifain Ukwama, for those insightful tips on on the electricity sector and increase in tariff and just how people can do better with um, the situation when it comes to electricity in Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time today on Business Day. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on the Business Day Energy Exclusive.
My name remains Elizabeth Musa. Don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at Business Day NG. Thanks for watching.